if you're guilty of it, fine, so you're guilty of it. Now, the repercussions are what's really going to matter. So there's really two different things you may want to fight. Number one is guilt or innocence. So let's say you have a DUI. Well, there are different levels of DUI. Uh, there are ways to plead a DUI down. Since we're talking about DUIs, and so the issue in that case, and, and there may be an issue of guilt or innocence, right? In addition to that, even if you are guilty of a DUI, and let's say you took a breathalyzer and you blew well over the limit and you're clearly guilty of it, what your sentence is or how you're punished for that could there could be a great disparity among that, especially in the military, right? Because there are a whole host of consequences which can flow from that. And so I think it's always important to hire an attorney. You know, again, we don't do DUI cases, but I know a lot of lawyers make a living and in, 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 you know, specialize in DUI. And that's really what you want to have. You want to find a lawyer that specializes in DUI defense because it may be the difference between actually serving prison time and not serving prison time, uh, having a license revoked or having your license suspended. Uh, and there's a whole host of consequences that can flow from that. And so DUI really no different than any other type of criminal charges, because again, DUI, these are criminal charges you have against you, which could put you in jail and could take away your freedom. I think it almost always makes sense to talk to a lawyer and likely hire an attorney to represent you, because even having that attorney, you're not going to be the low hanging fruit. And again, you can take responsibility for your action or if you were guilty of it. But again, there's a lot of disparity and the sentencing isn't always uniform uh, without an attorney advising you or just going in on your own. You may get crushed and you may get I mean, potentially maxed out or have very harsh sentences or fines imposed against you. Or if you had an attorney that could be lowered dramatically. And I think that's almost always worthwhile for someone to retain an attorney if they were uh, arrested for DUI or if they you know, or if they're going through a trial for DUI and they're in the military, because, you know, as we can talk about. That's the DUI. Let's say you have a DUI out in state court. You know, I used to be in, um, you know, here I am. I'm in San Diego this week at MCRD. And so San Diego is a great example. Let's say you're a Marine stationed at Miramar or you're right behind me, really, at MCRD and you're driving and you get pulled over by San Diego Police Department and you get prosecuted um, by the San Diego police. Well, depending on what happens with that case, there could be a tremendous amount of repercussions for you as a Marine or as any, really any service member. I mean, that can be adverse administrative action. In the Army, they do GOMARS a lot. And GOMAR is a general officer memorandum of reprimand. And if that gets permanently filed into your file, you're done. I mean, it is a career ender. So if you are a captain, you're not making major. It's just not going to happen. If you are a, a sergeant, you're not making staff sergeant. It's not going to happen. And the reality is, not only are you likely not going to pick up rank, but the reality is that you're probably going to be separated from the military. And that can happen a lot of different ways. And that can be through an administrative separation, or if you're an officer, they can require you to show cause for your retention. And the interesting thing about DUIs, and we saw this a lot when I was stationed out, when I was not stationed, when I, was, uh, I had my practice out in Hawaii, in particular the Army, they won't wait for your court case to end. And the Marines do it as well. So let's say you get arrested um, by Honolulu Police Department for DUI. Now, there's going to be a blot of report, and that report's going to be sent to your command. So your command is, imagine how much you try to hide that. The reality is they're going to find out that you got a DUI, and they will process you for separation before, you know, really before the case is finalized. And so what we will often see is you are arrested for DUI, then you're going to get a GOMAR, a General Officer Memorandum of Reprimand. This is in the Army. They will permanently file that GOMAR typically, and then you'll be you know, up, up for separation if you have over six years of service in, um, or they're trying to get you out with an OTH, you get a right to a board. And you can be having an administrative separation board. You can be in for 15 years and be up for an administrative separation board for a DUI, and there's been no adjudication in town yet. That happens all the time. And it's incredibly frustrating. We go to these boards and we're fighting for someone's retention after 14, 15 years when there's literally millions of dollars in retirement on the line and it hasn't been adjudicated. But the reality is the CG doesn't care. The CG says, well, if they pulled you over and you blew a 0.17, it doesn't matter what defense your lawyer comes up with or not, they're going to process you for separation. And these are very uphill battles that we have to fight. And so in these DUI scenarios, if that happens, the suit you need you really need an attorney that knows what they're doing in DUI defense almost immediately. And remember that the attorney that's representing you on the DUI is probably not is going to be the same attorney that's representing you on the military side. So in that case, you're probably going to need two lawyers because someone like myself who would handle an administrative separation, who would handle a, a GOMAR rebuttal, all of the adverse administrative actions which flow from a DUI, that's a niche specialty. 
And there are not a lot of lawyers in the country that do that type of work. And so that's not going to be the same lawyer that's handling your DUI, or at least it shouldn't be, because you want someone, as, as much as I'm specialized in those areas of the UCMJ, you want someone who's equally as specialized doing DUI defense. What you don't want is the guy that hangs a shingle down the street and does DUI, UCMJ, MedMal, civil rights, and, and does a little bit of everything. Uh, what, that's just not going to work. You're going to want a specialist. Um, and so it's really important to have not only an attorney taking care of this for you, but really the right attorney for each phase of, of what you're going to go through. And it's going to be a mess. So again, I said this earlier, the easiest way to prevent this with DUIs, it's, it's so simple. I and mean, DUIs are the easiest offenses to prevent. If you've been drinking, don't drive. It's just so simple. Go and get an Uber or go get a Lyft. And, and yeah, you're like, I don't want to spend 40 bucks. I don't want to spend 30 bucks. Well, you probably spent 120 bucks drinking that night. Or you probably spent 40 bucks on beer, and you're going to ruin your entire career in someone else's life so you don't want to spend 30, 40 bucks. Um, save 20000 in legal fees and someone else's potential life and get a freaking Uber. Right. And that's the it's the it's the easiest crime to prevent. Um, and so it's, again, most commands and, and even myself, I, I just don't have a lot of tolerance for uh, for DUIs.